Is that okay? <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm sure we're all in agreement here. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> Father, thank you for this day, this, this time when your people come together, the church, the called out ones, the people of God, uh, your chosen, the elect. Lord, the terms are all over the scripture, but that's who we are. We belong to you. And Father, you dwell in our midst and we get to dwell in you. So Lord, thank you for that. We pray that you would just oversee today's service in every, every area, uh, that you would be glorified in every facet of the service today. Uh, that's why we're here, is to lift up your name, to exalt you. That's the bottom line to everything, because you are worthy of all praise. Lord, we pray for Dennis today. He's going to be bringing the message just speak through him. Let your Holy Spirit fire him up and speak the word through him. And we can grab a hold of it and run with it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Pray, praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I walked in darkness and clouds covered me. I had no idea which way I would be. Then came the sunrise and pulled back the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more her darkness, no more her night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. Then like a blind man, God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Your turn. When death takes me down and I breathe here no more An anthem of sound on that eternal shore I join with the angels in heaven on high Singing praise the Lord, He is the light I saw I saw the light, I saw the light, no more her darkness, no more her night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Amen. Nobody wants to dwell in the kingdom of darkness. You can't see what you're doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. 
I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my heart dare to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name on high Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to her to show the way from the earth to the cross. My heart dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to her to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky lord i lift your name on Amen. Lift his name up. He is worthy of all praise, all glory. <sighs> Don't you just love sitting there, maybe watching the rain or something, and just start worshiping him? Amen. Saying, thank you, Lord, for this rain. Thank you for these blessings that are pouring down from heaven. Wow. Whew. Are you thirsty for more God? Amen. All right. He pours down, down his blessings just like he does the rain. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, just come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of light, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. In the waves of his mercy as deep cries out too deep we sing come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. All who are thirsty, all who are we, just come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow 
be washed away in the waves of his mercy. Steep cries out to deep. We sing, Nothing but your will for me, I'm only free in you. Nothing but your will for me, I'm only free in you. Come, Lord Jesus. Nothing but your will for me, I'm only free in you. Come, Lord Jesus. Nothing but your will for me, I'm only free in you. Sing it. Sing louder than that. Come, Lord Jesus. Boy, I find myself saying that more and more every day. Ready? <laughs> when I stand before your throne, dressed in glory, not my own, what a joy I'll sing of. On that day, no more tears or broken dreams. Forgotten is the minor key. Everything is it was meant to be. And we will worship, worship forever in your presence. We will sing. We will worship, worship you, an endless hallelujah to the King. I will see you as you are, love you with unending heart, and see how much we faith bring me home. Not till then, Lord, shall I know, not till then how much I owe everything I am before your throne. And we will worship, worship, forever in your presence we will sing, we will worship. Worship you an endless hallelujah to the King. No more heart tears, no more heart shame, no more sin and sorrow ever known again. No more heart fears, no more heart pain. We will see you face to face, see you face to face, and we will worship, worship, forever in your presence, we will sing, we will worship, worship you. An endless hallelujah to the King. 
We will worship, worship you. An endless hallelujah, an endless hallelujah, an endless hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the King. Man, I just have a hard time imagining how all of that happens all simultaneously. The whole kingdom of God, the new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem, everyone worshiping around the throne, holy, holy are you. It just goes on. And yet, it's a new heavens and a new earth, and God has assignments for us all at the same time I can't wait just to even think about it oh let the son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have those things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you Oh, 
to Jesus, I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily give. I surrender I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender humbly at His. Feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Make me Savior, holy Thy. Let me feel Thy Holy Spirit, truly know that Thou art mine. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power, let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender Father, we come to you, surrendering all. Father, that's a big thing. Reminded of Jesus, if anyone would seek to come after me, let him first deny himself, and then take up his cross and follow me. When we sit and think about that for a minute, that gets to be uh, a lot of commitment. And Father, we want to be totally committed. We want to surrender all. But Father, we're weak. And we need your help. So that's why we come. That's why we worship you. That's why we acknowledge your omniscience, your omnipotence, Father. You are, you are all powerful. You're all seeing. You know what we're made of, for you are the creator. And so, Lord, as we come and as we sing in hope 
that you would do these things, we believe. We believe the gospel. We repent. And we come to you as we sung earlier, to the sheep of your pasture. Have your way with us today. And in Jesus' name, they all say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you were quite spirited today in your singing. It was a blessing. You should have been up here and knock you over. It was good. Let's take some time to fellowship one with another, break some bread. Hi. Yeah, interactive. That's great. I was supposed to wait on Anna, but I better get going. I might get. Uh, well, well, oh, there she is. I'm sorry. I literally didn't see you. I'm sorry. It's good to be here today. I'm, uh, my wife and I would like to share with you. I, I will do the sharing, but it's, it's, it's our story from his story. And um, so let me begin with, with prayer, and we'll get going. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, that you know us. You, uh, you've made us, and you've given us a purpose. Lord, bless the message today for it comes from you. You were the author, and Lord, I pray it would work in the lives, all of our lives, Lord. Um, it would be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, I had a hard time figuring out how to start what I'm going to share, but I'll just, I'll just go from, from the gut here. Um, this past Saturday, not this Saturday, Pat, but a week ago, we... Our daughter moved into the dorm at college, and she, the, the 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 second chapter of her life has turned the page, and she is um, she is going at it fully. Uh, she's engaged in in a job, and she's going to have a full load and live on campus as she begins her her uh, her next chapter, and uh, which brings me to the reason uh, of our chat today. I want to tell you about her first chapter, in case some of you that don't know. Some of you I've shared some of this with, and Monica has too. Um, but the story is all about grace, all about saving grace. And if you know, my daughter's name is Gracie, and it is for that reason that that, that is her name. It was not going to be her name, but with the reasons that I will share with you, uh, you'll see why. Psalms 139, starting in verse 13, it says, For you formed me in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me. And that's for you and for me, for, for all of creation, for all humanity, we were formed in our inward parts in our mother's womb. We were fearfully and wonderfully made according to his story and in his timing. We talked about timing last time. That at the appointed time, God uses time to, to accomplish his will and to do his, his works, right? So in the story, I'm going to have to go back a little bit, and then I'll fast forward, and then I'll probably rewind, and then uh, we'll get to where we need to go. But in uh, 1988, Monica and I were married uh, in June, and we began our life with, with uh, both working our way through college. Um, it, it was difficult, but it was doable. We did it, and we had a little help from, from our uh, parents, but um, most of it, most of it, we 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 did on on our own. And so, in as as we began to figure out life and 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 marriage and and life together, um, a few years into it, maybe five or six, 
we decided we would start, try to start a family. And it was time. And so we started to, to try to have a family. We, we, um, we, we tried for, for months and months, and you know, we used the clock and the, you know, the, 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 the timing and cycles and all that, try, try to figure out when was the best time and such. And um, eventually, uh, after a few years, I think, about, Monica got pregnant and we were tickled to death and it was, it was awesome and here we go kind of thing. And um, in some, some months into that pregnancy, she went on to have a visit at the doctor and there was no heartbeat. And so um, the, she, she, we lost the baby and it was, was devastating, obviously. Um, to, to, to carry that as well. I didn't carry it, she did. But then for it to uh, be, be terminated before birth was, was devastating. Um, so a few months went on and we decided, determined, we thought about adoption, but adoption is very expensive if you know about that, it's very expensive. It's about seven to 15,000 I think at the time. Uh, and we didn't feel God would have us go in debt to, to have a child, one of his principles in exchange for, for something else. So we didn't do that. We didn't have that kind of money. We, we did try fertility and went to the doctor um, and, you know, he went through all the exams and all that stuff. And um, so we started uh, the in vitro fertilization. Um, where, you know, you eggs and all. And we did it once and then it didn't work and twice and, and nothing and then three times and, and nothing and four times and nothing, five times. Uh, we tried and finally the doctor comes in after the last one and, and looks at us both across the table and says, look, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just not working. And I'm not going to, she was taking a fertility drug called Clomid at the time. And she said, I can't give you any more of that because it can, tends to cause ovarian cancer, which is another part of the story. And so we, we went home and uh, tried to reckon with the events, realizing that very possible that we would never become parents and try to sift through that. And so we, we did and we went about our life. Um, and then one day about, what was it, Monica, about six months later, a year, whatever, after uh, that happened, um, and at the appointed time, we had a phone call. I was serving at a church in Texas in the parking lot, standing watching the part of the building burn while the firefighters are, you know, knocking a hole in it, trying to put it out and all that stuff. I was just sitting there going, wow, this is crazy. <clears throat> they evacuated us and everything. And uh, I got a phone call on my phone. It's where you get the calls. <laughs> And uh, the lady on the other side said, this is, hey, Dennis, this is Dodie. She's one of my, my workers, youth workers. She said, uh, I have a coworker who has a cousin. She's 18 years old and is pregnant. She is seven months into it and obviously has decided to have the baby. But the decision is that she wants to give it up for adoption to a Christian family. Would you be interested? And so I called Monica, and obviously we talked about it, and we, um, we decided that, that that's what we wanted to do, to go forward with that. We had less than two months to get this all sorted out. And Monica spent the, the next few two months 
taking her to the doctor, getting her on Medicaid or Medicare, whatever that is, <clears throat> get her some help. She was basically alone in this. We, we drove up to Oklahoma and we met the birth mom and, and dad. This is back, you know, reverse a little bit. And uh, the dad was, 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 was good with terminating his rights. And so um, we drove back home and the, 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 the next step, the mom came to live in, in Odessa where we lived so that she could get care and be close, all, all that, so she came. And um, so we started the, the process of adoption, learn how, how this is possible and what we can do. And we went to a lawyer. The name was given to us. And um, he was up in the high rise building about 15 stories up. And we walk in in the lavish office and, <clears throat> and all these nice looking things that you would have in a lawyer's office that you might think. And we met with him and said, he sat down, uh, he, he um, told us the process. It takes about 90 days and, and that uh, this is gonna happen and this has happened. You need, you need the parents to terminate their rights and blah, 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 and all these things that have to be done. He went through it very deep, get good detail. And, and uh, then he looked at Monica and he's just like, well, what's wrong? It's like I'm almost she's almost teared up at the point, and she's like, you know, well, all this this sounds great and all, but but how much is this going to cost? We don't have a lot of money, and we don't feel like we should go in debt uh, to 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 have this happen. And so he kind of paused as his contemplating not not decision wasn't on his in his head I think at the time is what I'm trying to say and he he kind of gives a smile and he turns around and he looks he says you see these pictures here on my desk he said these are five of my children he said three of them are mine by blood and he said two of them are adopted and so adoption uh, has has a place in my heart and he, he was choking up a little bit even. And I was like, what is it going on? <laughs> and he goes, well, how about if I just charge you my costs, my fees, and the court? Just the paperwork. And you're just going to charge you the paperwork. And I said, well, that's great. I mean, I think that's awesome. But what are we talking about? <laughs> and he said, you still wanted to know, right? And he told us, and uh, it was something we could do with it was it was doable this man cut the price probably one-fifth of what it should have been in order for us to to go for the adoption I called my parents they involved them and that night my dad sat down and wrote a check out and sent it the next day in the mail to us and so we um, we had the money to, uh, to adopt, and we started getting ready for the process. There's always, there's always the chance that when a, when a mom or dad is giving their child up for adoption that they go, they go back on it. They don't carry through. If they can prove they were under duress when this situation, the, the, the decision was made, then the judge would we usually grant it and the baby would go back to the mom so the birth mom so for for a while there we were still on pins and needles we did not know how it was going to go and what was what was going to happen and it's a nerve-wracking time as we but then we began to look backward and just a few minutes few months earlier Every door was shut and locked. And it almost seemed like there was no way forward. And then all of a sudden, the phone call happened at the appointed time. 
And so Monica went through the, the whole thing, the, the rest of the two months. And on uh, July in uh, 2004, we were at the hospital and mom was fixing to give birth and there was 50 plus people in the waiting room, all waiting for this little girl to come on the scene. Church members, family members, people just started showing up and we're like, what is going on, right? And so um, the whole labor thing, the doctor, you know, she, he told the nurse to go ahead and get her, start pushing his office was right across the street. And so she started pushing. Well, she only pushed four times and here she came. Doctor wasn't there yet. He comes in, the nurse has, has got his little gown and ready for him. He kind of slides in it and gets his gloves on. And the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck and she was blue. And so they, they had to get that un, undone. And so they did. And obviously the baby was, was born. And they, you know how they, they bundle them up like in a little package, like a little cocooned butterfly? With just a little slit right here, right in their hole. And, and um, I, I was the first to hold. Monica was in the labor room the whole time, holding this, this girl's hand and uh, encouraging her. And then the baby comes. And so um, I'm holding her. And, you know, just like I'm holding a precious, well, a, a baby, okay, a precious baby that's really fragile. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to do anything wrong. My dad takes her. He's there. Uh, well, all of our family's there. And he pulls back her little cap, little things covering her head to, to kiss her head. And he, 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 we both see the same thing at the same time. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, look, Dennis, God signed her. And he pulled back and there's red hair just as red as hers right now. I mean, you know, sometimes you can't see the hair. Sometimes it's blonde or sometimes it's just not there. Well, this was there. It was visibly red. And, uh, of course, everyone just boo-hooed and, and all. And, and for the next however long, um, we, we celebrated uh, the girl that God brought into our life and all of the situations surrounding the story this is just the cliff note version now let's go back to another option we had <clears throat> when we were doing fertility the doctor said there is a possibility that your wife may have endometriosis and if she does, uh, and they do a surgery and they find it, then it's paid for by insurance. If not, you foot the bill. So we, again, that's the way your debt comes in. And 25000 or whatever she said it was, it was a lot of money. And so whether or not she had endometriosis or not, we decided not to do it because of that. That could have given us another path to, to getting pregnant if, if endometriosis is what causing it. So we didn't do the surgery. You following me? Six years later, I get up and find Monica doubled on the floor and <clears throat> she is hurting hugely, bigly. <laughs> uh, so I call the doctor, and, and uh, by the way, the, <coughs> the gynecologist that got her in and saw her, a Dr. Holder was his name, was, had a locker next to me in the gym. And we talked one day a few years before about, you know, does she have a gynecologist? I said, no, she doesn't really want to go to the doctor. She said, well, if you ever, <coughs> if you ever get her to go, you call me, and I'll get her in. So I called him, and I told him what happened, and he got her in the very next day. <coughs> you have to pardon my cough, it's allergies. 
Um, so he did some scans and such, and he didn't like a couple things he saw, so he sent her to a, an oncologist in Tucson. And um, uh, they ended up going and doing uh, exploratory surgery and found endometriosis. It had grown. Um, apparently, she'd had it for a very long time. And while the doctor was in there cutting out the endometriosis, she alerted to a spot on her ovary that concerned her. And so um, she had it uh, biopsied, and it turned out she came back positive for clear cell ovarian cancer. Rewind to the conversation we had with the fertility doctor years before that Clomid tends to cause or could cause ovarian cancer. Well, it did. The interesting thing about this part of the <coughs> sorry, the interesting thing about this part of the story is, had we had the surgery six years earlier, who's to say that it would have come back enough <coughs> to six years later alert her to go to the doctor where the doctor found the cancer? You follow? In other words, we were going, to, going we, we, pot, we could positively consider the decision to, to do that surgery six years earlier so that maybe it would help with pregnancy. Thank you. And <coughs> um, we didn't do it. <coughs> so I am convinced, <coughs> sorry, I have some here. I know, don't get nervous, I'm okay, it's just crazy. <laughs> I'm convinced that the Lord's hand was in the whole thing and, and orchestrated the whole story. Obviously, he did, but when you hear it and you live it, it just blows your mind as to all the things he was up to while we were in our little gloom, despair, and agony on me time, how all hope is gone, and 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 where are you, God? Well, guess what? He was, he was there, busy. You know, and sometimes when you're in the wilderness, uh, in a, in the valley, which at the time we, it was bum. You know, several years of that struggle. Sometimes he opens the window of grace so you can see firsthand what he's doing. Play by play. Like you're on the front, front row of his story as it unfolds. And you know that as you see it, it could only be done by him. And before the earth was formed, his decision was already made as to how we were going to become parents. And over the course of time, and on that day in May of 2004, when we got the call, Gracie's story merged with our story, originated by his story. And she was, was born. Um, it's all about his goodness and grace. We, we look back, because Monica, uh, you know, we talked about us sharing this. This is the first time we've ever shared the story publicly. Um, we've shared it over the years many times with people, individuals, who might have been in the same boat, but never in a public setting, mostly because Gracie was still here, and we didn't want, we wanted her rights protected, you know, you know, just, she's fully aware of everything that happened and knows the story completely. She just doesn't choose to go there, you know? And so we didn't. We, we, we honored her wishes. We wanted to make sure she was fully aware of everything that had gone on and how much of a blessing she was. All children are blessings, right? It's just, this is our story, so... We tell it 
uh, to, to encourage you and to cur- encourage, uh, when it was to encourage her, that, that what it says in Psalms, that, that I will praise you, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. My freedom was not hid from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, God made all these things happen. And can you imagine the, the traffic of events that had to occur in order for this event to occur? Events to occur the way that it did. And in his timing, I can't emphasize the timing part of it because all the while we were discouraged and, hey, this is not working, and God, why would we not be parents if we want to be parents? And, and I got to be honest, we'd look at so and so and like, they're parents, why can't we be parents? You know, and I mean, we'd be a little better than them at least. And, uh, you know, those whole things, that's how you, how you looked at the world. And all the while, he was, he was doing his thing. I mean, he, he, <clears throat> he was creating a masterpiece, as he does with all of us, right? His way, his when, and his story. He just has the goodness and grace to allow us in and to be a part of it, to be a part of his story. And we look back, we were talking over this the last couple of days. Um, I can't believe I've gotten through this far because usually I'm boohooing over in the corner somewhere. It's that fresh and that emotional as to what God did for us, what he does for you. And no matter where you're at in, in life and, and, and what things are going, maybe you're in a wilderness or a desert or, or maybe the, the, the mute is on and you don't think God is hearing anything. And many times, and I'm not going to speak for him, but many times the Lord is all about timing. It happens in his time and when he's ready. Can you imagine if we sped it up, you know, or delayed it any? It wouldn't have happened the way it did as perfect as it did to accomplish all the things that it did. So in his timing and at his appointed time in July on 2004, Gracie Page Houston became became ours and as we look back as we started our life together us three the doubts and the fears and the anxiety and the questions and the whatever involved with not all those years not having that just disappeared it melted with the love of God and the grace and his mercy because, because he showed us, he opened a window and allowed us to see this is what you were waiting for. And he, he did it. So praise be the Lord God Almighty who um, his mercies and his, his, his goodness and his grace is, is new each day, Right? That he always comes through to the believer that all things work together for good for those who are, are called according to Christ uh, and are doing about his, his, his bidding and his works. Um, and it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, it may not even be while you're alive, but he will work it out. He will make it a masterpiece and it will cause us jaw-dropping wow worship <laughs> when when it happens, if we just trust him. Yeah, I like to say that, that for a lot of these years, we just like, okay, we'll trust you, Lord. It's going to happen someday, and, and, and that, that's not really what happened. We were kind of like, what's going on? What, why? And, 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 and in those questions, I, I'm, yeah, I, can't, I can't imagine who say, just wait, 
just hang on. Hey, around this corner, you just wait till you get around this corner. I got something really, really big, and it's for you. And then, so we receive that, and 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 in this story, we 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 give worship back to Him for all of His goodness and and His mercy. And so, I want to encourage you to today. Uh, of a good and great and gracious God and that he is working day in and day out all the time. What the Bible says is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Actually your steps. All right, so that's, that's pretty micro when God's directing steps, right? Not miles or weeks or months, but, but steps. Very involved in, in your life and my life. And he does it for the glory of God to, to, to sh- because he loves us. But then in that, we would, we, would, we would worship him and it would cause us to be more in love with him and... And to not forget, a lot of times in the Old Testament, you'll look in Deuteronomy, I think it is, you see the words remember, half time and time and time. Again, remember, remember. Don't forget, you know, what God has done. Remember and teach it to your kids and remember and remember and remember. Because there will come a day in the future when you're back in the desert. Or maybe... Uh, your neighbors are. And God wants us to dig a well so that he can fill it with water so that when they come by, they can have a drink and not be weary and not fall and not give up. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, what, what happened. And we are eternally grateful for showing us uh, of his goodness and grace and um, so let's just, uh, in closing, let's just thank him for, for being gracious and for loving it and for giving us, uh, Lord, not what we, what we want in the time that we want, but in his time, he shows up and is always uh, there to provide. Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for... <clears throat> Lord, the story that you've given us all about our children or um, times in the wilderness when we felt alone or not heard or, Lord, we, and, and, and we were so quick to give up on you, the author of our story, and not realizing that, Lord, that, that you are working all the time, that you have a plan and it will be accomplished no matter what. And thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you that you didn't allow us to mess up what you were going to do, decisions we could have made and didn't make. All of that was your scripting. All of that was your urging by the Holy Spirit so that your will would be accomplished at your time. And, Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for for Jesus, Lord, the, the, the miracle that, of him dying on the cross to save us from our sins so that even in life when the tough times comes, we still have a hope that we will spend eternity with, with the Lord Jesus in heaven forever and ever and ever. And so, Lord Jesus, come. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, there you go. You're dismissed. I hope you have a good day. I hope you're encouraged. <laughs>